I need every weapon we have. Tsushima can't afford anything less. He are the warriors of Tsushima. Hiya friends! Before we begin the challenge, I'd like to address the comments on my Ghost of Tsushima pronunciation. Jin pronounces it as Tsushima, his uncle as Tsushima, and out of game I've heard Tsushima, with all seeming perfectly acceptable. After 400 plus hours in game, with about 5 hours more spent solely on understanding the pronunciation of it, I still can't quite say it right. I know the T is not silent, though I can say it like one says tsunami in English, but I know it's not the accurate way to say it, and I'm a tad obsessive, if that wasn't obvious by my challenges. I know Jen and other Japanese speakers I've seen pronounce it as Tushima, which I seek to imitate, but I'm told by a friend I'm overstressing the T. I'm only saying all this to make it clear I've given it my all, and like many of my challenges, it still wasn't quite enough. So as I intend to do plenty more challenges in Ghost, please bear with me when I fumble it up, much like I do my English. If a fluent Japanese speaker would like to visit me and scream directly into my ear the right pronunciation for 10 hours straight, please do. I'm fairly sure though this is meant to be a challenge video, not a how-to pronounce guide by somebody with poor pronunciation skills. Though honestly, what a channel that would be. No, instead we shall settle for beating ghosts with only stealth and ghost weapons. That means the bow and sword are completely off limits. Sadly, a large exception are duels, since all other weapons but the blade are locked off during those. So for those, we shall win without taking damage, without leaving the first stance of stone stance, and without ever changing outfit or charms that would make dueling easier. I also have access to the instant killing ghost stance, but that won't stay that way as you'll see. Selecting both Lethal Difficulty and New Game Plus so I can start with my ghost weapons, plus blessedly having the option to skip cutscenes, it's time to be the sneakiest lad in all of Japan. A key component to a stealth challenge is to be skilled at being sneaky. An idea I understand well in theory, but I'm garbage at implementing. Do you think running away from the easiest foes in the game will damage my legend? If not, cowardly hiding in a bush while my sensei gets sliced up will certainly do it. I'm highly appreciative of just how little awareness these Mongols possess, as I assassinate them back to back, yet still fail to get noticed. Sure, sensei snipes a few, but I like to think our victory over this fort is primarily due to my fantastic leadership skills. Can he see me, or is he just reluctant to leave? You don't think he can see me, right? No, I think he can see me. I think he can definitely see me. While helping Lady Masako avenge her family, I'm placed in the difficult position of a sword standoff. Usually, these aren't difficult, but something about using my face to block a sword strike isn't the best move. Surprisingly, not fatal though. What is fatal is my repeated attempts to save Lady Masako from dying. Perhaps if I had come a tad more prepared, I'd spend less time being a little goblin under the floorboards and actually useful in combat. But where's the fun in that? Helping Ryuzo goes slightly better with the ultimate power of smoke bombs. Or when I'm out of those, simply crouching down in the tall grass, and since these men have no sense of object permanence, I'm all clear to wipe them out. Well, most of them. How is it that Ryuzo can easily best me repeatedly but against one near-death shield unit, he can't do anything. These allies really aren't worth the trouble. If only the game would actually allow me to let Ryuzo die. Alright, Yuzo won't jump unless I jump. So I feel if I stay here long enough, Yuzo should burn first. He's literally in straw. Don't, don't you jump, Yuzo. Don't you jump. We die together, Yuzo. We die together if we have to. Where is he going? My god, he's the real Ghost of Shijima. At least sneaking into a Mongol controlled town to rescue Yuna's brother is exactly my kind of mission, because stealth is demanded by the game. And coming back to free the town is pretty simple, when I finally remember to bring my ghost weapons, that is. Oh, you're not dead. <laughs> I would definitely did not try and kill you earlier. Here, what about the other poison? Yeah, that works. Yeah, I'm sure he's fine. He's fine, he's just... He's having a bad reaction to, you know, the poison. The final step to freeing the town is dueling the Mongol warlord here. I thought my plethora of experience fighting these duels 
would make this quite simple. But usually, I'm in the correct stance with powerful charms, allowing me to aggressively tear the leader apart, plus I can just power through any damage. Didn't realize how much of a difference that would make it. After nearly 15 minutes of losing to him, I find that the best way to win is through patience and very careful strikes. But spamming an unstoppable gut slice to finish him off might also help. Just a little. With that town unshackled, I set off to help Yuna free another one. And by help, I mean let her do most of the work while I frantically avoid a bloody demise. Using the ghost weapons to achieve victory would work more often if I actually remember to gather some before I engage in said combat. Then why have my men found their brothers stabbed in the back? No idea. No clue. Sounds like natural causes, frankly. Freeing Ryuzo's captive mercenaries and eliminating a dojo full of Mongols directly after proved incredibly easy to pull off, minus the extremely angry Mongol leader. I must be losing my touch, because this challenge is proving to be one of the easiest challenges I've ever engaged in, and the only thing worse than an impossible challenge is one that's barely even a challenge at all. But good news, that all changes here at the end of Act 1, as we infiltrate the Mongols' defenses to save Jin's uncle from captivity. While the first part is a cinch to pitter-patter through, the duel against traitorous Ryuzo is far from easy. I'll make it quick. I will not make it quick. I will make it slow and painful, because not because I'm trying to hurt you, but because I'm really, really bad and apparently have the dullest sword ever. Doesn't help that he has a water attack that I can't seem to consistently avoid, so I have to pray he just won't use it. If only Jin could borrow the umbrella from Lies of P's Pinocchio. After such a continuous loss streak, the moment I had him to low health, I spam lightning strike till his health bar was ash. But turns out, this is the easy part of the section. Despite how much trouble I've had for not coming prepared with ghost weapons, I've learned nothing and still advance forward with no ghost weapons. And since stealth isn't on the table, I have to give up the ghost over and over. I only advance by equipping the charms that allow me to gain kunai back after a perfect dodge, something I'm very bad at pulling off. But this tactic does allow me to regain enough supplies to wipe out the opposition. Well, that, and the fact that the next duo can't see you if you're behind any object, even if that object has large gaps in it. Uh, hey, how you doing? Lovely weather tonight, yes? How about those, uh, Mets? I think they could go all the way this year. You know, if this wasn't a no-bow challenge, I would happily blow you up right now, sir. Although, honestly, in the light of this explosive arrow, I just, I feel a sort of love for you. Maybe we can all get along after all. You know, he's not so bad. He's actually quite friendly. Oh, never mind. Fighting beside my uncle proves to be pure hell as he's terrible at fighting. And, well, I'm me, which is self-explanatory. My only use here is as a medic, which I'm often so bad at that the only good I do is ensuring Uncle doesn't go to the afterlife alone. For the life of me, literally, I can't seem to pull off any more perfect dodges, meaning there's nothing I can do. I'd probably have to restart the entire mission if Uncle hadn't grown tired of waiting for me and just won all on his own. I really wish he'd done that way earlier. Or that I had the sense to buy more ghost weapons before we engaged in even more fighting as I became stuck yet again without any way to fight back. Only by sprinting away to cower do I manage to lose my pursuers long enough for them to forget me so that I can double back and assassinate. After all that suffering and pain to make it this far, I restart the entire challenge since I changed my mind about being allowed to use ghost stance and didn't want any part of the challenge stained with its use. But come on, at this point, I like to think I'm pretty accustomed to restarting all of this game. I like how he consistently still, he doesn't stop. He's got real trigger discipline. He always warns when he's about to fire. There's nobody else around. The only person he's warning is me. He's always like, hey, can you get out of the way of this arrow that I'm really trying to hit you with? Does anyone else have a random urge to just jump inside fire? Ooh, that's the stuff. Just burns the stress away. While I lose to Ryuzo just as many times thanks to that cursed water spray attack, I have learned my lesson about coming prepared, this time armed with more than enough ghost weapons. 
You okay, pal? You dropped your weapon. Here, let me let me help you up. Dude, this is getting awkward. Just stand up. I'll run with you. We're just getting our we're getting our cardio in. I mean, this is clearly friendship. You think I don't know what friendship looks like? This is what all my friends do. All right, well, it was good bonding with you, pal. I gotta go, though. Uncle. What? What are you doing here? You came all the way up? Do you have Stockholm Syndrome or something? Did I get you to be my new best friend? I think he wants me to come with. Excuse me. No, 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 no. Watch out for the bomb. No, I killed him. I didn't mean to kill him. What have I done? Goodbye, my little cardio friend. Now back to where we started, I freed some hostages from the Mongol forces, but not everyone. Hi. You want to be friends? You don't mind that I brutally murdered that man, do you? No, no. It was understandable, yeah? I'm just going to go free this hostage now. It's okay, little dear. It's okay, I'm just freeing a hostage. You know what? You're right. He's your hostage. Let the deer have him. If the deer want to hold you hostage, man, that's the deer's thing. I'm not going to get in their way. When it came time to defend Yarikawa from a Mongol siege, the people looked to the ghost to save them. But just like the Mongols, they're not going to find me. This might seem cowardly, but it's actually very heroic in a sense, as I'm teaching people self-reliance. If they survive, that is. And so begins the hardest duel of the run. This general here is normally an afterthought of a fight, never once proving difficult in any playthrough I've done until now. I have no excuse for failing to avoid that dreaded shield of his, I'm just an idiot, because that's pretty standard. But his flame sword I have little experience dealing with. Usually I'm so aggressive I can ignore any damage and bring him down. But obviously, I lack that luxury this time. Fire bending is bad enough, Worse even is that he never seems to run out of flame, reapplying quickly whenever it goes out. This fight is pure patience as I wait for my few chances to strike, and only after 30 minutes of fighting do I finally relieve the Fire Lord Ozai wannabe of his burdens. Then onwards to help Uncle take over another Mongol fort. Aha, I'm already inside. Oh, turns out they didn't want me inside. I'm okay. Oh, you know, these archers are really good at what they do. I'm starting to think this was a mistake. I don't think the game wants me in here. You know, if you guys can just carry me back outside, that'd be great. You know, you guys aren't making me feel very welcome. Does this happen every single time I get together with my friends? Yep, nope, see, that was a bad idea. I knew it was a mistake. Unfortunately, the end to this escapade is ensuring our messenger boat can escape which can only be done with his arrow shooting artillery. Sure, it's not me using my bow, but the idea is close enough. I couldn't disappoint you, and you never have. But I will. Have you not been paying attention to a thing I've done? After wiping out a few more Mongol encampments with ease, I blasted my way through a horde of enemies to take on Ryuzo. He's so clearly not looking at me. Ah, so that's what that feels like. You know, I don't think I like it. It's here I realize if I never try to escape, my friend Taka can never be murdered. So? How about those Mets? Um, your sister's lovely. It's better to die free, painfully, I suppose, than live as a captive. Ain't that right? I mean, it's not my death, it's yours, so we're gonna do this, Taka. Two men, legends in their field. Skilled beyond all others. Who will win? Probably the guy with the bomb. With that tragedy over, the assault on Uncle's castle begins, and frankly, it's barely worth mentioning. This entire section is made for this challenge, as I don't have to lift a finger with how many allies are here to do the work for me. And when I do have to act, it's a stealth section, which works perfectly. As for the fight against Ryuzo, well, let's just note, that if the other guy is never given a chance to strike back, then you really don't need to worry about getting hit, making it an easy win on my very first try. If only my uncle was more supportive of my actions. I know she drove you to this, uncle. <laughs> uncle, you're talking crazy. We don't even have cars yet. She could not have driven me to this. Driven me? Drove. 
drive-in. She did not drive-in me this. What, were you expecting something else? Nah, man, I'm gonna serve my sentence. I'm tired of fighting. Stabbing people in the back. It takes a toll on you. On your wrist, mainly. It's just a lot of work. Like a moth to the flame. I can't help it! It was worth it. I'd do it again. What? I said I'd do it again. I meant it. I really do try this time to avoid escaping with Sora, my horse. No matter which direction I take, or tactic I try, the game will not let me escape. I sat with Sora for quite a bit, just accepting this to be the end of the challenge because I can't take it. But I guess I wouldn't be much of a challenge gamer if I couldn't face the hardest challenge of all, mortality of my loved ones. So off I ride, and let me just say, I demand in Ghost 2 I get to assassinate some samurai. In fact, it doesn't take too long to infiltrate the castle once more, and I use that chance to attack every samurai I see. The game may fail me for it, but I stand by my actions. I also stand by the fact that I can smoke bomb my uncle and every other guard in here in order to get by them, all without being detected. He's here. I like how he's still shocked. Yeah, I threw a smoke bomb on you and sprinted away. You definitely should have noticed. With the final battle quickly upon me, I used probably a tad too many ghost weapons fighting with my allies before facing off with the Khan himself. Our big bad has always troubled me, and for this challenge, he really irks me, as he completely ignores so many of my strikes, whacking me aside. Surprisingly, it only takes 10 minutes to really get his moves down, and while they're certainly obnoxious, they're also not too difficult to dodge, and then only strike when I'm certain he can't retaliate. Unfortunately, like I said, I used most of my ghost weapons before engaging in this combat, meaning the second half of the fight, now against both him and his men, just won't work out. I simply don't have the firepower to bring the Khan all the way down, though I can get him quite close. Maybe I shouldn't have been so hasty to fight a guy that can take five bombs to the head and be perfectly fine. Even using Enraging Poison to turn his allies against him isn't enough, and when I res, I find that my items didn't res with me, ensuring there's no way I can beat him fairly. But I think it's obvious I don't quit easily. Instead, I restart the entire mission, become much more stingy with helping my allies, take down the Khan's duel on my second try, and this time engage him with way more ghost weapons, which actually leads to an easy win with the cruel twist of costing me four sword strikes to finish him off. Darn heroes with their dramatic finishers. All that remains now is a final duel against my uncle. I'm forced out of my ghost outfit, which benefits me, sadly, but not enough since uncle proves to be an incredibly fast fighter. In fact, he often loves to kill me before I can even restart the fight. The wounds you dealt my spirit will never heal. Killing me the wounds you're dealing my body will never heal, especially if you kill me. I don't want to hurt you. I do want to hurt you, actually. Ignore him. I do very much want to hurt you. It takes me far too long to remember everything I learned in my no death challenge for duels, but once it came back to me, Uncle proves to be a pushover. Before you die, Uncle, tell me. How do you pronounce our island's name? Please, it's an important question. Sparing Uncle once again, I can now say huzzah! With four forced sword strikes, five story duels, one sequence of arrow mass destruction, 44 deaths, and 125 reset duels, over 14 hours, 53 minutes, the grand majority of the game, but not all of it, can be beaten with just stealth and ghost weapons as a true ghost. Thank you all for watching. With all that training, I'm off to sneak around your house, stealing all your leftovers and loose lint. Any of you have a pet bunny? I'm taking them as well. Unless you catch me, I'll see you all later. Happy New Year, friends.